Oh, God. Okay. This coronavirus thing, there's got to be another way to do this. There's got to be another way to do this. There's got to be another way. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mothman Jones Movie Show. I am your host, as always, Bill S. Preston, and today's featured movie is The Way Back. It's directed by Gavin O'Connor. It stars Ben Affleck, amongst others, uh, but it's really this actor's movie. It's his vehicle. It's actually less of a basketball movie and less of a sports movie even, and more of a personal character journey. So it's about Ben Affleck's character, who was a humongous superstar during his high school days playing basketball, and between graduating and where we're at in the beginning of this story, uh, when we start the film, uh, he's in a bad place. But he gets the opportunity to coach basketball for his old high school stomping grounds, and we get a movie from there. I want to re-emphasize that point that this is less of a basketball movie and more of a personal character story uh, because this really is a movie that in a way parallels and echoes the real pathos of Ben Affleck in his reality. Um, There are some things that are made for the movie specifically, um, but when it comes to the alcohol issues, when it comes to his alcoholism, it seems like it's almost like he's battling Ben Affleck battling through that pain. It's honestly really sad and depressing to watch. But also, by the end of the movie, it feels cathartic for both the audience and Ben Affleck's character. He gets to do a lot acting-wise. It's his movie. You're going to the movie more or less for Ben Affleck to see what he does and what he pulls off. There are some fun and inspiring aspects when it comes to the sports aspect of this movie, but it kind of is put in the background so that we get focus on Ben Affleck's character and all the demons that he's battling over the course of the two-hour movie that we get to see. The brushstrokes may not become obvious for some viewers, but for me personally, I it became clear in the first 20-25 minutes what we were getting as a movie. It's not intently about this team that's really crappy, and they've been crappy for a long time, and they come up and rise and become the best basketball team of that season by the end of the movie. It's more about the way that the game of basketball, or just this game in general, sports in general, affects the lives of of people and the people surrounding these individuals. And through the storytelling, there are ways that the game of basketball does reflect what happened with Ben Affleck's character. But for him, the details are less about that and more about actual transpiring events that just put him in a position where he just felt like the only place he could turn to was alcohol. And it is, at first, it could be a little humoring watching him just downing drinks it can be, I mean, like, he's just, look at him, he's just drinking, 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 and you can find a laugh at it, but when you understand why, when you get the answers to these questions that you may have, it's, it's honestly, like, I, it's, it's draining and emotional, and I, it's like a giant weight just, like, falls on your shoulders, like, ha, now what, now what are you gonna do, you're gonna laugh at that, you stupid ass? Gavin O'Connor, as a film director, isn't a director that really gets discussed as much as he should in the ozone layer of conversation that is film. He's been making impactful, intelligent movies for years. Warrior is one of the best sports movies out there, but again, Warrior is less about the game and more about the people. You get The Accountant, this movie about an autistic man who's a hitman, and it's it, it does a lot more than it had to. But what really impressed me here with Gavin O'Connor was the way through his editing and storytelling, the way we're presented with details or lack of details. Traversing through this plot, we have knowledge of certain aspects of Ben Affleck's life and the life surrounding him with other people, his ex-wife, his family, just the way to communicate the uh, body language, all that is communicated very well in what his relationship is with all these people. And you may have a question about one thing, like, for example, when he gets a coaching job, he's really well-spoken with the kids, and he knows exactly how to get to them and how to directly talk with them and communicate with them so that he could coach them properly. And you're like... He's never coached before. This is his first coaching job. How is this pop? But then you learn something, and it just totally makes complete sense. But the way you learn things about where this comes from is not just some throwaway dialogue. It's incorporated into the story in a way where it's it's impactful, it makes sense, and then you can go back on it and go, oh, okay, I, I do get it now. And the way this film navigates the alcoholism issue with Ben Affleck's character, it it. you expect one thing from it because it is, in a way, a hopeful, triumphant, redemptive story. But in another way, it's unpredictable because the way we get to that arc being fulfilled, it was genuinely surprising for somebody like me who's seen like 100 sports movies in my lifetime. Backtracking to what I mentioned before, I do really think that the film sends a great message of hope. It's a very depressing movie. It's a very draining movie, an emotional movie. Uh, But at the end of the day, I think it has a little bit of rewatchability 
because of where we end up with the character for Ben Affleck. It's also, a, a, again, a great glimpse into Ben Affleck's actual personal pain that we've seen in the public space, and we don't even know half of what he's going through, really. It's like, for all intents and purposes, Ben Affleck wanted to make this movie to get out this release of what he's been going through. And thank the Lord for Jennifer Garner, who is an incredible partner in life, uh, despite them breaking up and divorcing. What that is like, I can't even begin to imagine. I don't know what that's like. But Jennifer Garner made sure that this movie was made because they were about to start production as Ben Affleck relapsed. Jennifer Garner made sure that they didn't cancel production on this movie and that they got this made. And thank you for that. Um, this movie is incredible. It's not the sports movie you're going to gravitate toward. It's not like the Rudys or the Rockies or the Little Giants of the world where you're going there for the sport. And even though these movies all do reflect the lives of characters and it's triumphant and it's very wonderfully awesome to watch underdogs win or succeed. This movie is more about, as I was backtracking before, finding hope in darkness where there seems to be no light at all. I'll say that no matter what you're going through and what, no matter what you've been through in your past, there is there is some peace moving forward if you work hard at it. If you put the work in, there is, there is peace out there. In the way back especially, for oneself. There are people out there who may watch this movie and really get that message and really want to do something to help themselves if they're in a bad place. And that's, for that, this movie is awesome for existing in that sense. Shout out to actors such as Al Madrigal and Janina Gavankar, um, and just the entire cast in general for really bringing their all to really aid in showcasing the dramatic chops of Ben Affleck's journey and really emphasizing how, how, um, Difficult it was. I don't have any real flaws with the movie. I don't. But I do think that if you go into this with the wrong mindset, then you're not going to like it. If you go if you go into this looking for, like, Space Jam, Teen Wolf, the Coach Carter even, um, which the latter delves into adult issues and themes, but really is a triumphant basketball story, you're not going to get that here. I'm just being completely honest. You're not going to get that. But if you're looking for something that has incredible drama and also happens to have some really fun basketball parts that we do get in between a little bit um, that reflect the personal struggles of living, this is your movie. But now I want to know from everybody here watching this video, what did you think of The Way Back? If you've seen it, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you've enjoyed watching my face talk about movies, you could like this video. If you haven't already, you could subscribe and you could ring that bell too because if you ring the bell, you'll be notified every time I make a new video so you'll never ever miss it. Follow me on the social medias now. I made a TikTok and I made a Way Back TikTok because... Why not? And that's it. Thank you again for watching and taking the time out of your day to watch this. And again, be careful with the coronavirus. It's out there. It's it's literally on my island right now. I don't I could have it as I speak. Take care everybody. Be careful. Have a great day. Love y'all. Peace.